how is cryptocurrency going to save us? Well, it's very simple, really. In the existing power structure, how do you elevate yourself to power? Through the currency. And once you achieve power, you and all of the other power brokers get to control the very system that brought you to power. Look at the Fed, for example, never been audited and has immense power to impact your life through tiny measures like changing the interest rate. Governments can print more money for themselves when they need it. With the blockchain, with cryptocurrency, you can still elevate yourself to a position of, of, of wealth, but not of power. Because no matter how much you have of something, if it is designed properly as a cryptocurrency, you're going to have no control over the means that brought you to power. So power will shuffle to those people who deserve the power. Uh, 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 Masak Fonseca has been hacked three times since 2013. On the dark web, there's just all, all kinds of information. Uh, much of this never hits the light because the hackers use the information to uh, either blackmail or, or uh, steal credit card information or billing information or bank information and, and to enrich themselves. And law firms, the, the clients of law firms are, are obvious targets of this because especially something like uh, Masak Fonseca, uh, which is an offshore banking law firm, I mean, it costs you $100,000 to set up uh, one of these accounts. Uh, so obviously the clients are wealthy. Uh, but who has the most to gain from, from the leak itself? Not from the hack, but from the leak. Um, it's the U.S. government. Uh, think about it. Uh, OCCPR, which is uh, a, an organization funded by USAID, um, uh, is in charge of, uh, I see, uh, the, the International uh, uh, Committee of Investigative Journalists, ICIJ, yes. yeah. uh, that, that is part of OCCPR. Um, I, I believe it was it was uh, the CIA or the, the NSA or one of our other 14 covert agencies within this government, um, simply because nothing about American citizens was leaked. And, and if you if you think about what this implies, it's sending a message It's saying, first of all, we're smearing our enemies. Secondly, if you are a client of uh, Masak uh, uh, Fonseca, then we know who you are as American citizens. And if we knock on your door and say we need a favor or for you to do something or not do something, uh, you know, you'd better pay attention. I mean, I'm sorry to be so cynical. I am. Uh, I love America, but I think our government has gone insane. Well, I think the white hat hackers and the black hat hackers have a great deal of information about the U.S. government, which which would be very harmful. Yes. It would be foolish to release such because the wrath of our government is is awesome, uh, as anyone like myself who has experienced it. Um so, so yeah, I, I do believe it's the, it's the U.S. government, and I believe there are going to be further uh, leaks that come out as time goes by. But keep in mind, uh, uh, Masak Fonseca is only the fourth largest in the world. There's a, the, a larger one in Hong Kong, the, the world's largest, four times as large as um, Masak Fonseca. Uh, and, and I believe we're going to find uh, things coming out from these other law firms as well. Law firms are, by the way, the, the easiest thing in the world to hack, the easiest thing in the world. Uh, some of the larger, like Kreindler and Kreindler, have been have been hacked seven times. All the data of all of their clients is on the dark web, uh, and anyone uh, who can access the dark web and who has the the right uh, passwords, the keys, the uh, knock on the door, I'm who I am, uh, can access this. So um, I believe that there's going to be more like uh, uh, releases of information that's coming down the pike. But but you have to ask yourself why. Because we know for a fact that America is, is the largest um, customer uh, for these, uh, these offshore accounts mm -hmm. uh, because of our tax structure and because of uh, the, um, the way our, our IRS goes after people. Uh, we are the largest customer. Not one, not one name, not one individual, not one movie star, not one sports figure, uh, not one politician was leaked. And I, I think the agenda had some <clears throat> un, unwarranted... Um, uh, casualties. I mean, the, the, the prime minister of Iceland, that, that poor guy. Yes, I, mean, I agree. You no, know, if he did anything at all. I mean, it's perfectly legal to have an offshore account. I That's mean, right. I had all of my after-tax income went into offshore accounts. Why? I don't trust our American banking system. I'm sorry. <laughs> I agree. Um, so there's nothing illegal in not trusting the American banking system and putting all of your after-tax income into an offshore account. 
uh, and I, I claimed all of this stuff, and it was it was you know nothing nothing underhanded, uh, nothing sneaky. Just I'd mother and rather have my money somewhere else. I'm sorry if you took if you if you define enemies as someone trying to kill us. Okay, yeah. uh, that one one of the only non enemies of America that was that was smeared. So you have to then understand that if this was by our U.S. government, then there's something behind our U.S. government, which is controlling things in a, a very sinister manner. Now, that scares me. I don't know about the rest of you. I mean, I'm 70. I, I do not scare easy. You must believe me. But it's frightening. And, and it's frightening because I, I have children and grandchildren. And the things that are happening here, which we're allowing to happen, without speaking out, without standing up, without marching in the streets. We're allowing this. When we allow our privacies to be invaded, when we allow our liberties to be taken, they're also taken from our children and grandchildren and on down the line. I mean, it's impossible for me not to buy a new cell phone and not get hacked by somebody. Usually it's, a, it's an agency of our government yeah. within 24 hours. I just let it happen now. If I want secure communications, I use a dumb phone with special hardware. All right, so that so that I can still have some tiny amount of privacy left. For the rest of it, I know that even if you turn your phone off, if it's been hacked through a stingray, which the FBI and every agency in our government has, then even if you turn it off, it pretends to turn off and it looks like it's off. But I, I want to ask you something. Everybody at home, why don't you wake up in the middle of the night, put your hand on the phone that's turned off and ask and see, is it warm? You would be <laughs> shocked at how many of us have been hacked by our government, and they are watching us. They're listening to us. I just take the battery out of mine now. I mean, I, I know I'm being watched. I just take the battery out when I want some privacy. It doesn't take a cybersecurity expert to know this. I, I knew they had a contract with, with Celebrite that, that dated back to, to 2013 when I went on the air and, and started complaining. But think about it. If our FBI, our, our greatest agency of intelligence gathering on this continent, is incapable of unlocking an iPhone when I can do it and 10,000 other people can do it, then we are in deep shit. Excuse my language. We're in deep trouble. Yep. We are. And, and this is something we have to start understanding. Let's use our common sense, please. The FBI goes, I can't unlock an iPhone. I mean, I know that everybody who goes to DEF CON who can do it. Uh, everybody who goes to Hack Miami can do it. Mm -hmm. All these hackers can do it. But we, the FBI, can't. Therefore, give us a master key. And they happened to choose a telephone that was used in a terrorist act. Yeah. So we're supposed to be afraid now. Oh, my God. If they don't get access to that phone, terrorists are going to come in and destroy us all. I mean, it is so outrageous, insane, and unbelievable. And yet so many of us, so many of us bought that argument. Please, we have to use some common sense in this country. We are known for common sense. I don't think anybody in Missouri believed it. And, and it's, it's like it's, it's a win-win-win for the government and a lose-lose-lose for the citizens. It's a win because we get to smear our enemies and we get to exaggerate that smear. If you think about it, I mean, if we are controlling the release of the information, we can control the content of that information. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. Because nobody else can get access to it unless you're on the dark web and, and you know people, you can't get access to anything. And so you have to believe what the ICIJ is telling you. And keep in mind, it was the Süddeutsche Zeitung in Munich, Germany, that first got this information. Well, it is well known that the Süddeutsche Zeitung is filled with CIA people. This is a, I'm sorry, I'm not trying to be a conspiracist here. I mean, I'm 70 years old. I've been around. I lived in Munich for two years. I know the facts of life. So the CIA has infiltrated the Süddeutsche Zeitung to a high degree. And so they can actually manufacture information now because they're all going, no, we're not going to release it because we don't want to harm innocent people. Well, what the hell is that? What is, in it? What is innocent, first of all? Uh, clearly, all us Americans are innocent, except the ones who are going to get a knock on their door someday soon and go, look, we were the CIA. We know what you did. We saw what you did. Please, we, we have to get back to a, a, a position of common sense, rationality, and calm reasoning in this country. I mean, we were founded on reason, for heaven's sake. Benjamin Franklin, Thomas Jefferson, give me a break, people. These people thought things through. We don't do that anymore. Someone bombs the World Trade Center or some airplanes fly into it, and they go, oh, my God, unless you give up your liberty and a certain degree of your privacy, we can't protect you. But we want to protect you, and we know you want to be protected. We buy that. We buy into it lock, stock, and barrel. Stop. Stop. 
Look where it has, it has brought us to this point of madness, where our government, which is, is supposed to be a servant, is now our mother and our father and our boss. I don't need a mom and pop. I'm 70. I want to be my own man. And anybody over 21 should also want to be your own person, your own man, your own woman. Be yourself. Our government has gone from serving us to us serving it. It should be completely transparent. Our tax dollars, we should be able to trace every dollar that we pay in taxes to some end product in the government. But no, we can't see into the government. They have a curtain, an iron black curtain, which we cannot see through, hear through, or know anything about. But our lives, it demands that we must open up our kimono to show the government that we are not the enemy it's protecting us from. Please, people, see this. Get angry. Get out in the streets. Say, I'm mad as hell. I'm not taking this anymore. Do something. Please. I, I'm, I'm fighting alone here. It feels like it. Everybody is afraid of our government. I feel like I'm fighting alone. Uh, and I'm fighting the two-party machine, the Democrats and the Republicans. And we see what that has led us to.